This is Monday, December the 20th, 2021. The title of our devotional today is Moral Depravity Demands the Judgment of God. Our scripture reading, 1 Kings chapter 14, 2 Chronicles chapter 10. And we're going to begin with an introduction to 2 Chronicles 10. You're going to notice as you read the Bible today that there is uh, a familiarity of those things that we read here. That is because they are a parallel record of the events that we've already studied in 1 Kings chapter 12. Now there Rehoboam had been crowned king of Israel and when the northern ten tribes petitioned Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, to lighten the burdens imposed on them by his father, he refused the counsel of his elders and in pride followed the advice of his peers, provoking an insurrection in Israel. Now the ten northern tribes succeeded from uh, Israel as a whole, and they themselves became known as Israel and made Jeroboam the king. Now Ahijah, uh, the prophet had prophesied that Jeroboam would one day be king of the northern ten tribes of Israel, 1 Kings chapter 11. Now, the prophet has spoken that the word of the Lord to Jeroboam and entreated him in verse 38 of 1 Kings 11, If thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways and do that which is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments as David my servant did, that I will be with thee. And will build thee a sure house as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. Now, the Lord made Jeroboam king of Israel. However, that man failed to obey the Lord's commandments, and he led Israel, the northern ten tribes, uh, into idolatry and great wickedness. And we're going to read today in 1 Kings chapter 14 the consequence of Jeroboam's sin. Now, 1 Kings chapter 14. Though he had been warned by a prophet of Judah that his idolatry and wicked ways would not go unpunished, 1 Kings 13, Jeroboam continued in his sin until his son Abijah became deathly ill. Now, fearing his son might die, Jeroboam commanded his wife to disguise herself and to go to Shiloh in Judah and to ask Ahijah the prophet to reveal what shall become of the child, that is, of his son. Well, Jeroboam's wife obeyed him. And coming to Shiloh, she entered into the prophet Ahijah's house. Now, Ahijah condemned Jeroboam's sin and foretold his son's death. And so we read in First uh, Kings 14 and verse 5 that the old prophet was blind. But the Lord had revealed to him that the wife of Jeroboam was coming and was disguised as another woman. Well, she arrived at the prophet's house, and he bid her enter, but then he questioned Jeroboam's wife, Why feign, why fake, why disguise thy, thou thyself to be another, like another woman? And then Ahijah condemned Jeroboam's wickedness and directed his wife to remind her husband that the Lord had made him king in Israel. And God would have blessed him had he kept his commandments. However, Jeroboam had rejected the Lord, made himself idols, and provoked God's wrath. Well, the looming consequence of Jeroboam's wickedness was that his son would die and Israel would mourn his death. 1 Kings 14 and verse 13. God also uh, prof, uh, presented and foretold through his prophet that he would raise up another family dynasty to be king in Israel. The prophet revealed, however, that Israel would one day be conquered and the people taken into captivity, 1 Kings 14, 15, and 16, because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin, and who made Israel to sin? What were the sins of Jeroboam? They were that of idol worship, the rejection of the God of heaven, rejection of his law, of his commandments, the rejection of worshiping at the temple in Jerusalem. He had turned his back on God and he led the nation of Israel, the ten northern tribes, after his ways. Well, Hajj's prophecy was fulfilled. For as Jeroboam's wife entered the city and came to the threshold of the palace, the child, we read, the son of Jeroboam, died. While Israel did mourn the death of the young prince, even as Ahijah had prophesied. 
And Jeroboam, the king of the northern Israel, died after reigning 22 years. And his son, Nadab, ruled briefly for two years, as we'll find in 1 Kings 15, before he was assassinated. Now that brings us to Judah once again, the southern two tribes, Judah being consisting now of the tribe of Judah and the smaller tribe of Benjamin. And so we find in 1 Kings 14 and verse 21 through 31, the sin, the depravity, the humiliation, and finally, the death of Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, whose grandfather was David. Now, our historical narrative then in, in 1 Kings 14 now will focus on the life of Judah. Rehoboam, we read, had reigned 17 years during a tumultuous and tragic time in Israel, fulfilling the prophecy that the kingdom would be divided after Solomon's death, Rehoboam had failed to unite the people. While the northern ten tribes succeeded under Jeroboam, the son of Solomon was left ruling only two tribes, Judah and Benjamin, which of course had in its territory uh, Jerusalem. Now, the northern ten tribes began worshiping the golden calves made by Jeroboam. The tribes under Rehoboam, however, were no better. For we read in verse 22 of 1 Kings 14 that Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they had committed, listen, above all that their fathers had done. Now, the temple in Jerusalem continued to be a place of worship, and an outward form or semblance of worship continued there, though the nation as a whole committed all manner of wickedness. How great were, were the sins of Judah? Prostitution under the guise of religion was present everywhere in the land. And the depth of depravity to which Judah sank is summed up in 1 Kings 14 and verse 24. We read, there were also sodomites, homosexuals, in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. Now some closing thoughts. Judah was guilty of the very sins for which the heathen nations before them had been condemned. Sodomy, homosexuality, was the pinnacle of gross wickedness. And Judah had embraced that sin to their own demise. No longer a powerful nation shielded by God's blessings, Israel and Judah had rejected the Lord, disobeyed his laws and his commandments, and became Judah in servitude to Shishak, king of Egypt. 1 Kings 14 and verse 25. And what did the king of Egypt, Pharaoh, Shishak, do? He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord, the temple, and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away, and finally, he took away the shields of gold that Solomon had made. You might remember, those were in what was described as his house of Lebanon, built of the cedar woods of Lebanon. Defeated and humiliated, Rehoboam disguised the poverty of Judah. Having brass shields made to use in public ceremonies, replacing the gold shields of Solomon. Outwardly, they looked like they were gold shields, but they were really nothing more than brass. Tragically, rather than peace, there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. And finally, verse 30, Rehoboam died. Moral depravity demands the judgment of God against a nation. What was true of Israel and true of Judah, my friend, is true of your country as well. Let us, God's people, repent of our sins and be a testimony of God's righteousness. Thank you for joining me this day. God bless and bye-bye.